Welcome back. It's Cosmo and John teach Google Ads. Which is yeah. Fun. And uh, today we're going to talk about audiences inside of Lord Google. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is kind of like the Google's categories. So if you're familiar with Facebook, it's um, it actually goes a little bit uh, more in depth. I think not in terms of details, but in terms of capabilities of the audience. <clears throat> Where Facebook most of the time is, unless you do, you know, like a custom audience, but Facebook is the who they are. Um, you have that capability inside of Google Ads as well to target people by who they are or, or um, what their demographics are. But you also can um, target by what they're associated with or what they're particularly looking for or any sort of like intent audiences that you can kind of custom create. So that's what we're going to be going over to, to today. Um, and the different ways that you can actually um, target them, which is different from Facebook as well, because you can say, oh, I just want to observe these people and see what would actually happen if I only bid on them, or you can actually just bid on them, like in remarketing, you bid on a, on a, um, you know, remarketing or seller audience. Um, so yeah. Well, you're pulling that up. My experience, or my understanding of Facebook's data is that most of it is purchased, hence the Cambridge Analytical scandal, right? Like they're buying a bunch of data and appending it to prospects. Um, in order to sell that data to advertisers. I, and I don't know this for a fact, but I get, I'm i under the impression that Google's data is mostly aggregated, which I've based off I of think user, so. like intent, experience, whatever, which makes it probably more valuable data. Is there anything that we have to validate that? Well, I, I know that it's probably off of intent as well. Um, like I've known that if I click on an ad on like Instagram, for example, I get like three more companies advertising to me with the same product or service. Um, yeah. So I think there is a lot of built in like, hey, this person's interested in this because they clicked on that. Um, but you also have to think about when you take into consideration why you would click on something, <clears throat> you know, it could be, you know, really, really cool video that was well made and graphic and professional, like a parody video or something like that. Just because you watch that parody video that so happened to be an ad doesn't mean you're in the market for those samples. Um, so it kind of takes like those singular steps that I think it really um, broad very quickly and not very specific, not saying like this person has been actively researching or planning this for many days. It's like, Hey, they watched that video. So they must also be interested in this as well. So now you can advertise to them. Um, so I like, I like Google's just because it's, it's multi device, you know, what if they do on their tablet, on their, on their desktop, on their phone, as long as you're using like the Chrome browser, for example, they have a lot of really good data. Um, not just because you, you know, watched a specific YouTube video. Um, mm. it all has, they have to have those kind of multiple signals before they can say, yep, that's, that person's either an affinity, uh, like they, they actively are in this industry or, um, yeah, this person's like really looking at multiple websites that have this very specific type of product. So they're probably in the market for something. Um, so I like a little bit more because I think that it takes a multi-prong approach. It's like, are they the same people that we want? Are they affiliated with the same industry that we need? And are they actively researching or planning something that we're looking to sell them or, or offer them as a service. And then you have a pretty strong audience. Uh, and I'll kind of show you how this, how this works inside of Google ads. Let me share my screen here. Um, so we're looking at it on a screen, obviously we are going to be keeping the, um, the company up here hidden, but, uh, I won't really share with you all the details down below just yet, but what we're looking at is audiences to edit. And I've selected just the brand campaign as an example. Um, but you can add to the campaign and also add to an ad group. I thought it was really interesting because different ad groups have different, you know, keywords that you're going to be targeting uh, or different, you know, ads. So you might want to have different ad groups defined by avatar. Uh, it also so means we, that we can test different audiences between different ad groups. Which is kind yeah, of yeah, exactly. All with one, one spending campaign. Um, so you have a few different things you can search. Um, and that's like website visitors. Um, these are the recently ones, uh, recent, uh, um, recent ones that we've used, but if you said, uh, like security, for example, security, just like how Facebook, um, you get these kind of different segmentations. Uh, what are they actively researching or planning? This is the intent audience. Um, so people in market for network and enterprise security, and then top related audiences and YouTube categories, it gives you all of this good information. Like here's how we define this audience. Um, and you can either choose to say, yes, I like that audience. Um, and I would like to target them or just observe them. Um, so you can search just like how you would in Facebook, which works really well. Uh, ideas, they give you ideas based on your keywords, based on your website, based on your ads, based on your remarketing list, et cetera. They'll actually start to give you, Hey, this is who I think that you should be going after at least targeting from a, for an observation perspective. Uh, so Google kind of does a hard, hard work for you and the heavy lifting. Um, and what's kind of cool is it's based on, uh, 
Uh, where'd that go? I had there. Ah. Okay, hold up. Yeah. And there we go. <clears throat> so it's funny, like 10 billion to 1 trillion. Um, <laughs> based on regardless search campaign, advertisers like us based on websites similar to our selection. So there's this one's going really, really broad, really, really wide. So there's ways to kind of narrow this. Um, and they're overlaying targeted audiences with either placements or with keywords um, or even exclusions. Uh, so you can kind of pick and choose which kind of categories that you want. But what's nice about this is if you're going to be running a YouTube campaign, if you're going to be running display, if you're going to be running GSP, this is how you kind of select the people based on not only who they are, but what they're actively researching or planning. And when you click browse right here, this is this is kind of the start of the hierarchy. This is how you're able to kind of start to dive down the rabbit hole of each type of, demo, uh, of audience. So who they are, detailed demographics, parental status, marital education, homeowner, uh, then you have what their interests and habits are. So this is what we call the affinity. And affinity, uh, for example, like Cosm, you and I, we are in an affinity office uh, or affinity audience of you know Google Ads or digital marketing. We're not actively researching or planning a purchase or something. But if I was to go after other you know Google Ads agencies with an ad, I would choose an affinity audience because those are people who are actively you know involved in that that audience category on a very frequent basis. So. It's almost like you can, it's like a mix between who they are and what they do. Uh, they may not be actively wanting to go do something like start a Google Ads campaign because probably not going to be a Google Ads agency. But if you're an, in, you're, you're an affinity of something, it's like you could have a job title in it or you could be a professional at something. Um, so that's what's kind of nice about the affinity audiences. Uh, the in-market audiences, again, this is people who are actively researching or planning. And it could be, you know, pretty, it, this one goes fairly in depth, which is nice. Like for example, babies and children's products. When you have a subcategory, um, child car seats, like that gets pretty, that gets pretty specific. If you're a car seat company and you have people that are actively researching or planning the purchase of a child car seat, it'd be a perfect audience for you. So now, I have a question there just to pause you real quick. And this is yeah. something you and I discussed a long time ago with the, the real estate investment campaign, but why wouldn't somebody uh, take the car seat uh, audience, just as an example, why wouldn't somebody target only that audience? So not observation targeting, and then go after every broad match modified or broad match phrase in existence, just trying to get in front of this prospect, regardless of whether or not they're even searching for car seats. So if yeah. somebody has the word and I'm going after that search term. Yeah. And that's, that's something that is possible. You can do that. Um, I think if I was to choose between some of this looking to type in, you know, purchase car seat online, versus going after a specific audience. Um, I think there's probably an overlay of the two they could do, run two different campaigns. One's an inbound search or, you know, obviously hopefully shopping if you're gonna be selling a product, <clears throat> but then also a display campaign to feed into that smart shopping um, campaign. So probably a good, good dual uh, purpose. But with Google ads, the, the people that are in the child car seats, um, I would have to imagine that they're probably you know, everywhere in their funnel from I'm just starting out because I'm thinking about having a baby to I now have six kids and I have no more room and I need more car seats. Um, so you can, you can imagine there's probably a wide breadth of those people that are, you know, actively researching. And that just means act, like looking up car seats, but they may not be ready to buy just yet. So usually you would run around a shopping campaign because they're clicking on products with prices that they're probably looking to buy. So I don't think it's as strong. Um, but it would be uh, a very relevant audience to at least start to run display and YouTube videos to. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, from an inbound search, maybe. Um, you know, if someone is, if we're looking at say, this is the uh, audience here and we're gonna target them and we're gonna use just uh, broad match modified car seat um, and just let it run, you'll probably get some, get some pretty good results. You may not capture everyone because maybe they haven't been identified there yet. Um, but I think it would, it would probably work pretty well. Yeah. And I mean, obviously what I'm saying is hyperbolic in a way. I don't really think anybody's going to go that broad, but it is interesting yeah. that Google lets you get down to this level of specificity in terms of what somebody might be interested in. And it, I mean, just feel like it's something to capitalize on as mm -hmm. often as possible. Yeah. When what's actually a little bit stronger than this uh, is similar audiences. <laughs> so for example, if I was to actually do this, um, the, that execute that idea, I would probably go to um, this one right here and make a similar audience of the all converters. Um, and then, because they're gonna be all walks of life who were taking the same steps in order to purchase my car seat, for example. 
Um, they might have different affinities. They might have different in markets, um, maybe not in the market specifically for a car seat, but they're looking for uh, baby stuff. But since they are a similar audience of everyone who has come to my website and already have purchased, um, I probably compare those two and see which one wins. I would imagine one or the other would win at a certain time. Do similar audiences have the same limitations as custom audiences? 50 grand in spend, 90 days compliant, year long run campaign? No, the only one that you actually need to do is a uh, customer match. So you can run uh, similar audiences, you can run custom audiences um, instead of Google ads. Like you can run a custom audience by saying, hey, if everybody that's gone to my site and did not bounce, uh, that would technically be considered a combined audience as a custom audience. Uh, you can mark to that. But if I had a list of like 5,000 people and I wanted to upload that into uh, Google ads to run proactive display and YouTube ads to, I need to have at least, you know, uh, $50,000 in, in lifetime spend. And I think it was like a year of good compliance. Um, so not like I'm not getting my campaigns suspended all the time. Um, they want to make sure you're not just, you know, dumping in a cold list and, and bash and blasting with Gmail ads. Um, so but everything else besides that customer match you can do right off the bat, which is nice. And I don't mean to derail because I'm sure you have a process here, but I noticed that the idea is tab. Uh, how relevant have you found that to be with each of our clients? You know, we manage almost a hundred campaigns. How good are Google's ideas from an audience perspective? The ideas are good. Um, really depends on industry though. If they're, if they're, um, how do I describe this? the industry and how broad your market is, is, is going to be the deciding factor if this is going to work. For example, we have a client that um, extends the service contract of a major hardware company. Technically their audience is like network and enterprise um, uh, maintenance or uh, no network and enterprise like infrastructure that you can imagine means everything. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, if you're dealing with the building and wires, like, that's your person. So you may not be having this particular, um, you know, hardware with that particular end of life that needs that particular, um, you know, extended service level agreement. That's like maybe, you know, one tenth of 1% of everyone in that audience. So just a display campaign is gonna be horrible, but car seats, that would be great. Um, like those ideas would, would really work. So it depends on how niche your, your business is. Um, anything that's more niche than pretty much a blatant, yes, this is perfectly lined up with who we need to get in front of. I'd rather use uh, similar audiences. So similar audience to visitors, especially Google ads. Like that one is really good. Similar audience to people who have been to your, uh, or have been to your website through Google ads before is very strong because they typed in the keywords uh, that got to your ad, that clicked on your ad, that went to your website. Finding similar people means similar people that are also Googling those types of keywords or actively researching or planning those type of keywords that would also click on or I would also go to your website. So it just kind of expands that same process really well. Um, so anything that's, you know, outside of just the, yep, exactly the car seat audience that I want, I would rather use uh, existing site traffic to make either similar or custom audiences from that. Got it. Sorry to derail you. Hmm. No, we're getting to kind of to the end of this. Um, so the in-market audiences are that, uh, how they interacted with your business. So this is what we talked about, like similar audience, similar to all converters, similar to all users. If you have a lot of traffic that goes to your website from email, from social, from direct, from organic, from paid, similar to all users could be really good if you want to do a really nice um, uh, broad sweep outbound campaign. Uh, similar to all visitors. <laughs> I love this AdWords. They still call it AdWords in there. But this is the people that came to the website specifically from Google Ads. Um, similar to all visitors of 540 days. So as far back as you can go. Uh, and then similar to visited internal pages. This is the pages that are not our landing pages, pages that are outside of it. So that's really good because it's like people that have the pages per session over two, um, which is good. So similar audiences, combined list, uh, website visitors, again, same thing. Um, so like started sign up, but haven't paid buyers, like all of these that are ones that you can actually custom make inside of Google ads and then, and then target some of audiences from there. Uh, and then the combinations. So that's what's kind of cool is the combinations. They have to look like the people who are converters, also who are actively researching or planning car seats. So that's how you would like combine those two um, and leverage your existing users with a topic or a custom intent audience or affinity audience. And then say they need to have these qualifications and this qualifications. And that can get even crazier by saying, and they also have to be actively researching or planning this specific keyword. Um, so you can, you can very quickly kind of weed yourself out of like the majority of the audience, but you can get really, really, really hyper-specific uh, in Google. It's not just bidding on a keyword and hoping. Um, you can get pretty, 
pretty detailed nowadays. Which is well, cool. the point that you just made about weeding yourself out, that's why observation is probably the better way to, to begin because it saves you from backing yourself into a corner where there is no traffic. Right. And um, I'm just going to disregard this one. You can kind of see all of the audiences in market custom affinity. Um, custom affinity are basically like the affinity audiences that we created. So people who are an affinity of these specific keywords. Um, so you can actually create your own audience if you want. Um, and what's nice about that is if you had, you can create a custom intent audience, which means, uh, let's just say, um, you know, pens, I, I sell pens and I'm looking for people who are looking to buy pens. Well, that doesn't exist. Well, I'm going to make a custom one. Okay. What do you want to call your audience? People who are interested in pens. How do you want to quantify them? People who Google buy pens. There you go. Here's all those people. And then you can market to them. So you can make so many different types of, um, types of, uh, ad groups and audiences. And then you can see exactly how the conversions, um, you know, here's some uh, eight conversions for 11, you know, there's, these are all displays. So they're gonna be kind of, you know, broad sweeping, um, but you can see how each audience interacts from an outbound perspective and what gets you, you know, the highest conversion and lowest conversion, et cetera. Um, collaboration and conferencing tools for this client is good. It's really good. It's pretty much exactly what they offer. That one almost has a 1% conversion rate on display, which is unheard of. Um, average on inbound searches, I think 2%. Um, but you know, there's some, um, other ones here that were like advertising and marketing services. Eh, sort of, they probably do that as well. So that has lower one. So you can kind of see when you observe how those audiences interact and then make advanced bid adjustments or start targeting them in, entirely. Mm -hmm. The data shown here, are there people that are in two audiences? How much redundant overlap is there? Like I see web design and development twice. Um, yeah, that's going to be um, display, and then we're trying one that's pay per conversion, so we Got only it. pay. So yeah. Yep. So usually um, they're not going to overlap. They'll be simply just shown one out or the other. Um, and this is looking at the last ninety days. One has actually stopped. The other one has actually picked up. You're just not seeing it here because we're looking at the last three months. What um, if, so using a different example? What if somebody's in web web design and development and they're in advertising marketing services? In terms of the audiences that they land in. Is there a way to prioritize one or the other and to tell Google like, Hey, if somebody's in this audience, I I'd rather them see this ad first. Yeah, that's a good point. I actually don't think, uh, I don't think there would be, um, not that I know of anyway, um, to say, you know, this conversion came from this audience. I wouldn't even know if they're in the other audience technically though. Um, so that's good. That's a good question. I don't, I don't I know that one actually. The, the need to have a waterfall, you know, like if you have three audiences to prioritize them saying if somebody's in all three of these, because there's a lot of in instances where I think you'd have somebody who lands in the middle of a Venn diagram. Mm -hmm. You'd say if somebody lands in all three of these, let's prioritize audience one and then audience two and then audience three or yeah, the right. campaigns associated with those audiences, I guess I should say. Well, I think from there, what you'd probably have to do is just look at the actual result itself. Um, because while you might have a person that's in a, affinity audience that's also in the intent audience and the intent audience outperforms the affinity audience i would say that's probably yeah that's that's a that would be a true story and i probably would want to continue um marketing to both of them because the story may go that they were associated with that industry saw your ad clicked on it started researching now their intent and then they went back and purchased so um, we're going to naturally do that anyway over time they'll sort of what's that I mean, Google's going to get to where I'm going, but they're just going to get there faster. So there's no reason for us to. Yeah, run. probably. And I think that then there's going to be some, probably some overlaps in here as well. Um, people that are interested in like, you know, hosting and cloud that are also in, you know, advertising and marketing, I guess I would have to see which audience that they're a part of is more active as a whole um, because it's probably more than one of those people too. Um, and so I think that even if you have, two audiences just to figure out like, I guess would be what has the best click the rate conversion rate. Um, yeah. Well, and I guess, you know, my question presupposes too that each of the audience is attached to its own separate ad group, which might not be the case here. Um, well, it would be a, a separate ad group, but you might also have two ads from two different campaigns firing to two different audiences that have the same person. In right. Um, and then I would guess say if multiple instances of that time happens, what as Google deemed, the audience to be much more active, even though they're a part of the other audience. Um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be interesting to get that, that specific, I guess you could technically, um, exclude an audience from one ad group and exclude an audience from the other ad group. Oh, you're um, 
Huh? You're, yeah. You're sculpting with audiences. Yeah. yeah. I'm keyword sculpting. Now, the funniest thing though is, is it doesn't necessarily mean that that audience uh, was more active. It just means probably either a the the ad fired at the time um, that just happened to show this ad instead of that ad to the same person, and they just took advantage of it. They were going to do it anyway. It doesn't matter which one. And I guess it just sees like which ad gets to them first. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you I think you just came up with the answer. So for for audience A, you would uh, exclude our, uh, audiences B and C. But for audience B, you would only exclude audience C, and then you just created your waterfall. There you go. Yeah. And then you can kind of see which ones trickle down to the bottom. Yeah, yeah. just got a notification when you shoot a video. Hey. <laughs> there you go. We got granular there. But if you have any questions, make sure to hit us in the comments. We'll answer them. We offer a free action plan. So if you like what we're talking about and you think that we can help your business, let us know. Reach out, and uh, we'll do a full evaluation over your Google campaigns, let you know specifically what we think you should do. The action plans are built by a real life human being, um, it's not some bot that goes in and, you know, just pulls together kind of run-of-the-mill templated stuff um, and come back we shoot one of these videos every business day so we've got a lot of value coming to you so like comment subscribe share with your friends hit John's bell yeah what else do we have to say John uh, I think that's good I think you're, you're getting good at these like kind of canned closings it's, it's, yeah, I'm uh, good at the intro good at the outro and then you do everything in between <laughs> we should just record it so that we're like okay bye everybody and then we just roll that that b-roll if you do roll it <laughs> today. yeah but then I would have nothing to say <laughs> I need to start shooting these on my own. No. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye.